Nuclear weapons. Horrifying killers. The only time in history that nuclear weapons have ever been deployed was during the final stages of World War II, when the United States responded to the attack on Pearl Harbor by dropping atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. While these attacks were disgusting and devastating, the bombs dropped 70 years ago pale in comparison to the nuclear beasts the world has in its arsenal today. And you know what? That was two. Now we have thousands. So, what if all of the nuclear bombs went off at once? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I am your host, Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm asking, what if all of the nuclear bombs went off at once? Basically, you're all dead. Before we get into this cheery little preemptive anecdote, I want to ask you guys what you think, if anything, could encourage world peace. I think the world will unite when we find aliens. Let me know if you agree. Also, while you're down there, please do leave a thumbs up in the thummy section down there. Also, do share this video with a pal and check out the links to our sources and to the people who went into making this video. Okay. The nukes. Now, this video comes just after India's Prime Minister made some strange, threatening comments during his election campaign, and at a time that both President Trump and President Vladimir Putin love to chat about their big red buttons. There are currently circa 15,000 nuclear weapons in the world. America has 6,970 nukes, Russia has 7,300, with around a thousand other combined nuclear weapons stationed in other countries in the world, including France, the UK, China. Israel, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. The biggest known nuclear weapon on Earth is the Russian Tsar bomber. It's four times bigger than anything ever tested in the United States, and 1,400 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The biggest and most powerful nuclear weapons are stored in Russia and the States. So far as we're aware, there are only a handful of bombs as big and as powerful as the Tsar bomber in each stockpile, but plenty of smaller, more targeted weapons. While it would take around 15,000 Tsar bomber style nukes to destroy the world as we know it, one or two thousand could cripple civilization forever. If all of the bombs went off at once, what would that be like? Well, to put things in perspective, nuclear explosions are somewhat comparable to very large volcanic eruptions. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 in the United States of Washington released 24 megatrons of thermal energy, around half that of a Tsar bomber, but it only directly killed 60 people. However, this was a sparsely populated area. It seems that the Toba volcano explosion 75,000 years ago was roughly the size of the humble Tsar bomber, and that plunged the world into a 10 year volcanic winter. So, our question is what if all the nuclear bombs went off at once? And assuming that means they just, you know, sort of kicked off, popped and dropped where they're geographically located, then the areas most affected, of course, would be Russia and the United States. It's unknown exactly where the countries keep their stockpile. So what we do know in the States, here's a map for you, they're actually located pretty evenly spread across the whole country. So considering the whole nuclear fallout thing, no one is actually really safe. The north of the United States is less nuclear heavy, but if the wind was blowing in the wrong direction, well, the colder states and Canada would be getting pretty sick. Again, speculative storage sites in Russia makes it seem like the spread is pretty even too. The UK's nuclear initiative Trident is up in Scotland, France's seem to be all over the country, as are China's. North Korea's are in the Pungi Re test site in the northeast of the country, and India's are dotted around the country, but mainly in Bombay. Pakistan's are around the Afghan border, and Israel's are thought to be in the Negev desert. Of course, nukes are unlikely to miraculously go off. They'll go off if deployed. So, who is everyone aiming theirs at? Well, that seems like a bit of a sidetrack question, and it would actually make for a great video of its very own. But the majority likely would be pointed at the United States and Russia, meaning that once again, large parts of the Northern Hemisphere would be struck. I absolutely would not fancy being in the States or Russia if all of the nukes went off. Instead, I'd much prefer my chances in Chile, the Dominican Republic, Central Africa, or perhaps even Australia. But honestly, who knows how far those nuclear winds could sweep? If all of the nuclear bombs went off at once, millions upon millions of square feet of land would be absolutely obliterated. 
likely killing over a billion people. Wildfires would start that would burn even more of the land. Millions of tons of toxic pollution would be spewed into the atmosphere and kill billions more as it fell. Those who are most likely to survive would do so in well stocked bunkers, but again, there's no guarantee. Those on the surface would be subjected to a long nuclear winter caused by the matter in the air blocking out the sun. Some nuclear matter could also be flung out into space, which might be a nice little gift for aliens. Here, have our hot poisoned rocks. Thanks. While we estimate that 90% of humanity would die, as well as the majority of wildlife, there would probably still be pockets of life on Earth left, even if all of the nukes did go off. The bottom of the ocean would be less affected, so hooray for the humble sea cucumber. And those who managed to bunker down could eventually begin a rebuild, but they would need enough supplies to last them decades underground. And also, who do you think has access to nuclear bunkers? The wealthy, of course. We average Joes would stand almost no chance, and those already living without proper shelter, well, they would be the first to go. Those left on the surface would suffer from starvation following the loss of farmland. Perhaps they would live Mad Max style existences. All this being said, the earth itself could just about stand being hit with 15,000 nukes, even big ones. While those living on the planet would die in the aftermath, the rock itself would likely prevail, and after a few million years, it would begin to be a healthy place again. The earth would reclaim our urban fossils and life would have a chance at beginning over. Let's hope that the next generation of super animals aren't as murderous and depraved when it comes to warfare as we modern humans. So that was that. What do you think to this video? Is nuclear war inevitable? Can we stop it? What do you think will unite planet earth once and for all? Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Before I go, I just want to read some comments from one of our recent videos. It was also horrifying. It was, what if ants were 10 feet tall? Ooh, terrifying. This is what you had to say. Joe Herman said, Better question, what if wasps were 10 feet tall? We're gonna go nuclear in a day tops. Yikes, well, I'm not sure if we have enough nukes to nuke all of the giant mutant wasps or how that would work. As we know from this video, we would likely end up destroying the earth anyway, so why not just let the big, big wasps take over and be done with it? We are your humble servants, wasp kings. Jasmine King said, Rebecca, you're so funny and you make me happy and laugh, and you're very pretty. Thanks, Jasmine. I know you guys can't see my face here on Life's Biggest Questions, it could literally go either way, but laughter is the most attractive quality. That and the ability to answer ridiculous and improbable questions. You're welcome. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please do show your appreciation by leaving a thumbs up and sharing this video with a friend. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning. <laughs>